वेलकम एवरीवन टू अनदर सेशन ऑफ भारत के परमवीर आई कौस्तुभ सवान ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ इंडो साइंस एजुकेशन ट्रस्ट वुड लाइक टू हैंड ओवर द माइक टू वेटरन ग्रुप कैप्टन श्रीकांत वारवड़कर सर एंड स्टार्ट दिस सेशन गुड इवनिंग व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू द सेवेंथ एपिसोड ऑफ भारत के परमवीर टुडेज हीरो इज इज वेरी वेरी स्पेशल एंड लेट्स स्टार्ट अवर जर्नी this is going to be the last episode of this year uh, in our uh, uh, journey for 21 uh, weeks we are on the seventh week now so i wish you a very very happy new year meaningfully happy and happily meaningful year to all of you god bless you let's start our journey for today's episode as our ritual starts we uh, pay our regards to the 21 diamonds primary diamonds in the necklace of our bharat mata uh, we always feel obliged to them for giving us the freedom and maintaining our present state today's hero is from uh, gurkha rifles and uh, gurkhas are uh, known to be a good fighters though short in height they fight uh, like anything uh, field marshal manik shah had said once if somebody anybody says that he is not afraid of death either he is lying or he is a gurkha the motto of uh, gurkha rifles just listen to that kayar hunu bhande marnu ramro in nepali bhasha this is a nepali language it is better to die than to be a coward with this uh, uh, motto they fight and they fight to win today is our hero is captain gurbachan singh salaria pramvir chakra postmas uh, look at his face you can see the young just years 26 years age and he uh, laid down his life uh, and uh, behaved showed the world entire world what the character of indian armed forces are the specialties of our hero captain gurbachan singh salaria Premier Chakra are like this. He is the first officer commissioned in the Independent India to be awarded and honored with Premier Chakra. Uh, we have seen uh, 1947-48 was five heroes. All of them had joined the uh, uh, British Army before uh, independence, and then they continued in the Indian Independent India's army. He is the first officer who got commissioned. Uh, in 1957 10 years after uh, indian independence and uh, uh, getting awarded with the highest uh, gallantry military award parambir chakra he is the first until now the only officer to have been awarded for the actions in united nations peacekeeping force he is the first officer of nda 1953 batch to receive highest military honor the parambir chakra first officer of indian army to have been awarded the highest gallantry award parambir chakra while proving character of indian armed forces representing the character of indian armed forces on foreign land till then at the age of 26 years date of birth 29th november 1935 date of martyrdom 5th december 1961 was the youngest officer to have been awarded with parambir chakra what a pride first officer of the gurkha rifles till now three officers have received uh, from gurkha rifles have been awarded with the highest military decoration paramvir chakra he is the first officer of gurkha, gurkha rifles to be decorated with the highest gallantry award of independent india let's uh, see his life before joining army he was born in village janwal near shakargad in punjab of british india now in pakistan on 29th november 1935 his father sri munshi ram had served in the british indian army in the dogra squadron of hudson's horse in british indian army mother dhan devi was a homemaker she never went to school for formal education but was very very particular about the giving education and quality education uh, to her children uh, so that she don't suffer despite living in a village Uh, our hero guru bachan singh sarya was second child of the five children by the age of 6 years world war 2 had engulfed the planet and mr munshi ram being a armored corps officer 
had to move frequently from one army cantonment to another. He used to visit home during and as and when annual or casually was approved, he would visit the village, home, and his presence was a celebration time uh, for all, including relatives, villagers, and they would visit him and listen to the stories of Second World War. Everybody likes to listen to the uh, to the uh, stories of war. The probably had twin effects on Guru Bachchan Singh. First, Guru Bachchan Singh got inspired to be courageous uh, because my father is the greatest. Once that thing comes to the mind of a children, they become very courageous. And secondly, he got motivated to join the Indian Armed Forces and do something good for the country. After, after partition, a new nation was carved out of India on religious and uh, theme and sentiments. And independent India, uh, Munshiram decided to shift to India after partition. After shifting his family uh, to India, he settled in a village named Jungle in Gurdaspur district. Gurubhjan Singh went to the village school. Though he was not very attentive, in fact, at that age, it happens with everybody that uh, action things like sports or field actions are more attractive than uh, boring studies in the classroom. So he was uh, not different from that and he was very good kabaddi player especially. In July 1946, he passed King George Royal Military College in Bangalore. KG R R Royal Military RMC, KG RMC in Bangalore. But he could not clear the medical exam due to small chest. He was given one month notice to prepare and reappear for the exam. After one month, he excised and uh, passed the date, uh, exam. In August 1946, he went to KGRMC Bangalore for uh, studies. After one year, in August 1947, he got himself transferred to the nearest uh, KG RIMC uh, in Chalandar. So he got transferred there. While in second year, one incident occurred. You see, these incidents develop the personality and indicate what type of personality is going to be developed. So there was, uh, there are uh, children who are bullies in the school. They always try to uh, bully others. So one of the boy was troubling uh, uh, Guru Bachchan and uh, his friends. So he, one day he uh, decided it's enough. He said, I will teach him a lesson. A young uh, boy, Guru Bachchan, this uh, bullying boy was uh, very heavy and uh, uh, well-built. So he offered him, he said, okay, come down, we'll go to boxing ring and I will, we'll split the match. Whosoever wins, uh, I, will, I will defeat you, I'll teach you a lesson. And uh, the willpower was so strong Though he was weak, he defeated that boy and then he uh, apologized for the action. Further, he never uh, uh, had any problem in the school. Now, this particular sentence, I'll teach him a lesson. Uh, just keep in mind, it will come again in his life, <clears throat> in our presentation also. After passing out from the KG RIMC Jalandhar, he passed NDA entrance exam. In those those days, it was used to be called as Joint, Joint Services Wing, JSW, and it was established at Dehradun. Subsequently, it shifted to Pune at Khadakwasla present location, and uh, it has been called as NDA. So he joined uh, JSW, Joint Services Wing, in 1953 at Dehradun. Uh, passed out from there, immediately he went to IMA Dehradun in 1956, and was commissioned in the Indian Army in 1957. Simple man, very careful with money, he used to send money home for education of his two years younger brother, so Sukhdev. We'll see him, we'll see his photograph also. Sukhdev is alive. Sukhdev is now around 81 years young and lives in Pathan court. He is bedridden, but he remembers his elder brother, uh, Captain Guru Bachan Singh Salaria. Life in the army. Guru Bachchan Singh Salaria was commissioned in 10 years young independent India's army in 1957. He was commissioned in the 2-3 Gurkha initially rifles. However, he was later transferred after one year 
1960, March 1960, was transferred to third battalion of one Gorkha from second battalion. Uh, let's understand uh, the United Nations role, India's contribution, and Congo crisis, where our hero got the uh, proved his mettle. On 24th October 1945, India became founder member of United Nations. After Second World War, uh, the, uh, it was decided that uh, it, you can't afford to have wars. It, uh, nobody wins the war. The, the party which loses less is termed as winner. However, everybody affects it, affects the country. Country is the people, innocent people, children, women. So uh, United Nations uh, requirement was felt and India became founder member in, on 24th October, 1945. One of the major roles of United Nations is to bring about world peace. If needed and as a last choice, had to resort to the arm, uh, use of arms. Unfortunately, quite often, they had to resort to the uh, use of arms to maintain the peace. This is irony. Indian Armed Forces is the second largest contributor of troops in the United Nations missions and till now has taken part in more than 49 uh, operations. We, take op uh, we, uh, we participate in United Nations mission, not for getting the uh, recognition, but our motto of India, our Hindu culture is Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam. And as a responsible uh, member of United Nations, we take part in these United Nations actions. Congo mission of 1960, one of the biggest, two infantry brigades with 467 officers, 401 junior commission officers, 11,354 of the ranks participated to, main, to maintain peace in Congo. 39 combatants, officers and ORs and JCOs uh, were, were killed in the action. Canberra aircraft, Indian Air Force also participated with six Canberra aircraft in this mission. Now let's see what are the Congo crisis, how it built up. Since 1878, Congo, now Zaire, was ruled by Belgium. Now Belgium is a very small country size is 120th of uh, Congo, but they were ruling uh, Congo. Uh, after a uh, lot of uh, persuasion in January 1960, Belgium agreed to give independence to Congo. Elections were held in June 1960. Belgian Congo became Democratic Republic of Congo. However, the army of new nation continued to be headed by Belgium chief. Here they played dirty. Belgium chief continued to be the chief of uh, army staff of the new country, Democratic Republic of Congo. All the officers were Belgian, uh, officer, force, officer force was Belgian. No Congolese uh, was recruited as an officer in officer cadre. They were at the lower level. This resulted in a strong dissent and after independence, army declared mutiny. They wanted better salaries, they wanted expulsion of all Belgian officers so that independent country, Democratic Republic of Congo, will manage its own security with their officers and men. Uh, this resulted, the mutiny resulted into anti-Belgian uh, riots in the civil area also. Belgians uh, uh, were afraid without taking permission from Congolese government to save their uh, citizens they uh, sent their army, Belgian army entered uh, the new nation. Again, there was a, uh, angry reactions from the local people and government ordered expulsion of all Belgian troops from the uh, land of new nation. However, in the meantime, there is one uh, province, the richest place in that province, in the whole Congo is Katanga. Though, so the uh, provincial president, Moishe Stombe, announced that Katanga, the richest province of the country, was seceding, declaring itself independent from the Republic Cong of Congo. Now there was a, a difficult situation. Congo reached out to United Nations for help and sought military help to protect Congo from Belgium's perceived colonial threat. 
Mid July 1960, United Nations peacekeeping force, including Indian contingent of a brigade around 3,000 combatants, landed in Congo. Three, uh, third battalion of one Gurkha rifles was part of 99 infantry brigade, most of whom were airlifted from Palam to Leopoldville in Congo. The orders came suddenly from peace kept location to the peacekeeping location in warlike situation. Everybody was given three injections, one for yellow fever, second for cholera, and third for tetanus. Gurkhas, along with our hero, Captain Guru Bachan Singh, uh, Guru Bachan Singh Salaria, boarded the United States Air Force Aircraft Globemaster flight and reached the destination. Actions, now we'll go to action of the Paramir Chakra holder, Guru Bachan Singh Salaria. Captain Guru Bachan Singh Salaria reached Leopoldville on 16th March, 1961. In December 1961, he, along with one platoon of Alpha Company, were deployed near the uh, Elizabethville Airport in Katanga region for protection of refugee camp in Elizabethville. On 2nd December 1961, a skirmish between two drunken gender men trying to molest a Congolese women and the soldiers of United Nations Peacekeeping Force happened and it led to shooting. Uh, firing the shots. Nobody was injured, but the atmosphere was disturbed. Earlier, there was, there was a, a, a disturbance and this created further disturbance. This results into a nearby gendarmerie garrison creating roadblocks and managed to create a lot of trouble for United Nations peacekeeping force. 14 of UN peacekeeping force combatants were abducted. Major Ajit of three uh, Third Battalion of First Gurkha, uh, colleague of uh, Captain Gurbachan Singh Salaria from same unit, was earlier in the November 1961 abducted along with his driver. He never returned. The driver's body was later found wrapped in a green canvas nearby area. They killed him. Abduction of fellow officer was playing heavily on the mind of Captain Salaria. And he wanted to teach them a lesson the way he did to the bullying uh, person in school. On 5th December 1961, the D-Day at 0900 hours, orders came to clear the roadblock created by Kantangi's gendarmerie, the enemy, at a, at a roundabout en route to the airport. It has to be done immediately because it was aimed at stifling the United Nations forces lifeline. All the Russian arms, ammunition, and uh, casualty evacuation or wounded and dead evacuation used to be done through the flights. And the enemy wanted to take control of uh, this airport so that no aircraft could land and the United Nations peacekeeping force people would starve without Russian and uh, there will be a lot of disturbance. Further, they wanted to uh, enclose the uh, Office of United Nations Peacekeeping Force and trouble them there. At 11.40 hours, Captain Salaria gives a message to his rear party that he, along with 16 of his Gorkhas, are moving to the site. Around 13.15 hours, afternoon 1.15 hours, Captain Salaria and his 16 Gorkha soldiers stand in their combat uniform with 0.303 rifles in hand and the world famous Kukri in their teeth, waiting for the right moment to strike. Still about 1500 yards from the roundabout, the location to be closed on and cleared, they were to approach from airport side and Swedish troops to help them were to approach from other side to stop the enemy's withdrawal route. They were to be sandwiched by Swedish forces and the Gurkhas. The Gurkhas are ambushed and are under heavy fire from the uh, enemy from the nearby subsidiary locations. This happens when you are in the foreign land, you have a, you have a, a disadvantage of not knowing the uh, locations. Enemy has two armored cars, armored cars and 90 men hold up on trenches and rooftops of nearby buildings with semi-automatic guns far superior to our 303 
Purukhas. The quantity, number of uh, enemy uh, is more. The weapons that they are handling are better than ours. And uh, still, the willpower which matters of the Purukhas cannot be matched. Sorry, I gave a radio message to his head office that he was under heavy fire from four different locations. His men were engaged in gun battle and they had managed to blow up the two of the enemy's armored vehicles with their rocket launchers. Veteran Major General R.P. Singh, AVSM, BSM, who was then major and on the rear party, was the one who received this message. And clearly he says, I can, I can feel, I can remember the tone, tenor, and jubilation in the voice of uh, Captain Solaria. Uh, the time has come, right time has come for me to prove my blood, to prove what India and Indian Armed Forces people are. He was jubilant. He remembers having warned Captain Salaria to assess the situation very carefully before taking any further steps. Don't get uh, into the Josh mood. Have a hush also. He gave, them, gave him a message. Captain Salaria, by another man possessed, had curtly replied, I am going for the attack. I'm sure I'll win. That uh, was the last transmission from our hero that Major, uh, veteran Major General R.P. Singh received on that day. After that, he addresses his men. We will storm their location, orders the company commander, Captain Gurbachan Singh Salaria, to his men. Jai Mahakali Ayo Gurkhali. This is the war cry of uh, Gurkhas. Salaria yells out the war cry and leads from the front and sprints towards the first trench available nearby with a gun blazing from the hand, Kukri in the mouth, and he's rushing, sprinting towards the enemy. Mayhem occurs. He is followed by 16 of his men. Now, as such, the uh, rocket launcher had done, has, uh, had done the job. The two armored vehicles of the enemy were uh, made ineffective and this has disturbed the enemy. They never expected this could happen. And now, the, he wanted to seize this opportunity. Uh, he moves forward with Kukri Kukri is more effective than 303 gun. 303 is a second world war weapon. Every time you have to remove the, uh, uh, load the gun, uh, fire it, and again uh, offload and load the new. Uh, it's uh, time consuming. Kukri appeared to be a very, very effective weapon. Kukri comes in the hand and slashing the enemy, uh, uh, slashing of the enemy starts. There's a famous quote in armed forces. You sweat more in peace, you will bleed less in war. This was proved by uh, these 16 plus one Burkhas. Due to unexpected blowing of the two enemy armored vehicles, the enemy is disturbed and disorganized, and uh, this opportunity is seized and he attacks the enemy. Salaire was like a man who had turned into a killing machine, flinging, flinging the grenades, vomiting the men, and slicing their uh, necks uh, and killing them. He was possessed to teach lesson for the abduction of his brother officer, Major Ajit, and killing Major Ajit's driver, playing his, on his mind supreme, and he is now possessed man. Enemy soldiers scatters, started running away from the, this mayhem in a terror of the small group of Alpha Company under their commander, 26 years young, Captain Salaria. Salaria had just bonneted a man who was trying to escape when a burst of automatic free fire from another fleeing enemy soldier spread in his neck. He felt the blood oozing out from his neck. 26 year young, energetic man, blood doesn't drop, it oozes out. Two bullets had pierced his neck. He felt blood oozing out from the neck and soaking his shirt. In front, he could see the gendarmer running away and some of his brave Gurkhas still giving them chase and killing them. By now, he had lost too much of blood. He had achieved his task. He has taught the lesson for updating Major Ajit and killing the Indian combatant driver. He was at peace with himself. Closing his eyes, Captain Gurbachan Singh Salaria of 3-1 Gurkha rifles dropped his rifle and fell, drifting into unconsciousness from which he would never come back. This resulted in the gendarmer losing about half their enemy, 
They fled in utter confusion, leaving their dead and injured behind. This enabled the main battalion to easily overrun the Katangis force, clear the roadblock, and prevent the gendarmes, the enemy, from en encircling the United Nations headquarters in Elizabethville. For his actions of 1st December, 5th December 1961, his duty, the courage, and leading by example, disregard for his own safety, Salaria was awarded the Paramvir Chakra posthumously. The official citation is like this. On 5th December 1961, 3x1 Gurkha rifles was ordered to clear a roadblock established by the general mayor at a strategic roundabout at Elizabethville, Katanga. One company with two Swedish armored cars. advance from the airfield to uh, uh, reach the, to avoid them withdrawal. Captain Salaria with his small force arrived at a distance of 1500 meters from the roadblock at approximately 13, 12 hours on 5th December 61 and came under heavy fire. Small arms fire from an undetected enemy position dug into his own uh, right. Salari appreciating that he had run into a subsidiary roadblock and uh, enemy force might reinforce the strategic roundabout and thus uh, decided to remove the opposition. He led a charge with bonnet and uh, grenades supported by the rocket launcher. In this gallant engagement, Captain Salari uh, of the enemy had knocked out the arm two armored, course, armored cars. An expected bold action completely demoralized the enemy who fled in, despite their numerical superiority and protected positions, plus their superior arms and ammunition. Captain Salaria was wounded in his neck by a burst of automatic fire, but continued to fight till he collapsed due to uh, profuse bleeding. Captain Salaria's gallant action prevented any enemy movement of the enemy force towards the main battle scene and thus contributed very largely to the success of the main battalion's action at the roundabout and prevented the encirclement of United Nations headquarters in Elizabethville. Captain Salaria subsequently died of his wounds. Gazette of India, number eight, press 62, Cardozo, 2003, pages 185, 186. Yes, he is Mr. Sukhadev, younger brother, two years younger brother of Captain Guru Bajang Salaria, the then uh, general Indian uh, Army Chief, and now Chief of Defense Staff General Bipin Rawat had visited him. We all owe a lot to these families. We owe all owe a lot to the heroes. The more is to the uh, uh, these people because they are suffering. They are physically alive. In the absence of uh, the hero, they are missing him, but they have to live. So they owe a lot. All Indians, generations of Indians, must thank these heroes. Food for thought. Soldiers don't die when bullets pierce their hearts and heads through their uniforms. They don't die when they fall before or an enemy onslaught, or even when they, uh, they uh, get into the trenches, staining the earth with their warm crimson blood, worshipping Mother India with their warm crimson blood, as for the traditions of Indian armed forces. It's only when we forget their acts of bravery the, or the suffering of their fam physically alive families that the soldier dies. Rachna Bishrawat in the brave. I appeal to all of you, you should not be one of them. Do not forget the braves. Finally, Rashtraya Swaha Idam Rashtraya Idam Namama. Thank you very much. I have finished. God bless you. Wish you a very, very happy new year, meaningfully happy new year, and happily meaningful year. God bless you. Thank you.